Hey all my Crimsonites and welcome to the Crimson Cure channel where we embrace our femininity, increase our womanly values, and celebrate our brothers. So join me on our feminine journey to learn, heal, and grow. Hello everybody, how are we doing today? Hopefully we are doing well on this Friday headed into the weekend. I want to go ahead and thank you for co-sponsoring the show. Both Steve said what it is, good sister and peeps. Thank you so much. I appreciate all of you all's continued support. It means so much to me. It really, really does. And thank you so much. Gregory says, salute Kendra. The problem I have with black men like Roland Martin, Dr. Umar and the breakfast clubs, they allow these kinds of females con to contaminate their space with BS. A reason why other black men must part ways with them. I agree. And thank you so much to Frederick for your super sticker. I appreciate you as well. So we're going to go right into it because you got people. I, before we get to her slew of lies that she likes to tell in everybody's face, I mean, this is the type of chick that will definitely she play in everybody's face. She is a high, she one of these high powered hyenas. She a high powered hyena. Okay, but she's not as educated and not as articulate as let's say a Ebony K or a Fanny Willis. You understand? But the mindset is absolutely the same. It's the same mindset. Because we saw Fanny get up there and be sassy and lie in somebody's face. Tiffany Henyard, get somewhere sassy and lie in your face. Ebony K, get somewhere, she's sassy and be wrong. She ain't necessarily lying in folk face per se, but she get up there and be wrong. Get up there and spew nonsense. The way in which Roland Martin conducted that interview, if you can call it that, is why black people ain't going nowhere. That's why we done for. I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. That's why that that's why we done for. Foolishness like him. No smoke. No smoke. No holding of accountability at all. Not even so much as to bring up or to challenge the obvious lies in your face. And not that I take him so seriously anyway. I, I was I was never an, a fan or anything of his to begin with. And, I, and to be honest with you, I never followed anything about him or career or anything like that. But I was done with Roland when he got up there and danced a little jig 
for Hillary Clinton when she was running against Trump. When he got up there and did that little shuffle, I was done in. I was like, oh, so you be shucking and jiving. So, so I, you know, I have uh, uh, just dismissed him from that point. And then remember years ago when he was interviewing Dr. Umar and Dr. Umar got his issues as well. But I didn't like the way he conducted that little interview. Because if, if you bring in Dr. Umar up there to challenge him, go ahead and do it. But don't be disingenuous with how you do it. And don't be rude with how you do it either. Just, just have a debate if that's what you have. You don't got to agree with them. You don't got to like them. You don't have to, you know what I'm saying? But if you're going to invite somebody to your platform in order to have a debate or have a discussion or something like that, then do that, but do it respectfully. Do it, you know what I'm saying? Do it like you got some sense. Let the facts speak for themselves if indeed you have facts. But the way in which he failed to challenge her even a little bit on the obvious lies that she was telling, this is why we're not going nowhere. Plus, the people who was getting under my video and constantly under Pink Book Lessons video, shout out to her, defending this chick, uh, you know, don't tell me I needed to watch that interview. That interview was deplorable. Talking about I was wrong about her and I should watch the interview. See, the problem we having is just believing a, a obvious hyena at face value. The stuff she's saying is not even plausible. You understand what I'm saying? The stuff that she's saying is not even reasonable. You going to let an obvious hyena guide the narrative? It's not like you was interviewing a respectable woman and, you know, these really are allegations or as she said, they allegations. It's not like you was talking to a woman who has a track record of, of honesty and transparency and doing her job correctly. And now, you know, there are these allegations coming from left field and she really is trying to defend herself. And because she has a track record that doesn't say she, she's guilty of malfeasance all the time or whatever, you can kind of take what she's saying and hear her side of it. And say, okay, well, why do you think that these people are making allegations against you and this, that, and the third? That would be different. And even then, you ask the obvious next questions. If you're really trying to do your due diligence as a so-called journalist, I expect it better of him just from the standpoint of having done some research a little bit. He could have watched Pink Book Lessons uh, uh, playlist and got better information than what he got up there with zero information. Didn't have the heart to hold her feet to the fire, waited till after she left, then tried to do damage control with another video talking about he fact checked. You were supposed to do that before she got on there. But you know why he didn't do it? Put a one in the chat if you want to know why he didn't do no, uh, why he didn't challenge her or do any fact checking or at least bring it up prior to the interview. Put one in the chat if you want to know. The reason is because 
she doesn't go anywhere. Tiffany Henyard is cowardly her dang on self, as many hyenas are. They cowardly when they alone. They only get, they only get, you know what I'm saying? They only nuck if you buck in a group. They can't do nothing. They can't do nothing by themselves. All right. And she not going to go nowhere where you got to promise to kiss her butt. You got to promise to not challenge her or not say anything about what she's saying. You got to, you got to, you know, sign your name in blood uh, that you're not going to, uh, uh, you're going to let her back feet trample and smear all over your platform and you're not going to say anything and you're just going to let her talk and say her truth. We're going to go through. Yeah. He needs to make a whole new skit with that roly bird. I ain't going to lie. Tariq is a fool. Okay. That, that man know he can roast somebody. That he that man know he can roast somebody to go so far as to create a puppet. And he has done that to several people. She wasn't gonna go nowhere. That was going to challenge her. So he had to swear to her. He had to swear fealty to her back feet. Before she could get up there. Because she's not going to go nowhere. To uh, have no real uh, conversation about the things that she do. Because then she'll swear to God. You attacking her. and I, Because she'll she, she, uh, she, uh, a hyena. The, they world class victims, but this is actually why we don't go nowhere as a group. We don't get to the interview, but this is why we don't go nowhere as a group. Don't come up under my uh comment section talking about some uh we gotta listen to what she say. I'm not listening to nothing she's saying because she a liar, and we give obvious liars, obvious criminals. Obvious people who obviously plan in our faces a pass because somehow we get on this where well, they black type situation and we got to tread carefully. Why we got to tread carefully when she is over there running roughshod over our, over our people. I told y'all Dalton was 99.9% .9 black South suburb of Chicago. They are working class and working poor in Dalton for the most part. These are the kinds of people that they work in. They might even have two jobs trying to make ends meet. Some may be on some type of government assistance, things of that nature. So this is not a wealthy, affluent suburb that we're talking about here. And even if it was, it wouldn't matter. But it makes it even more egregious that she's doing it to people who barely stand afloat. Businesses that are barely hanging on and she shuts them down. She harasses these people. She, you know what I'm saying? Creates bureaucratic red tape as to where they can't get their permits and things of that nature. Anything she can do to become an obstacle to these people. She a dirty, back-footed, bitter baby mama that I don't know how she got in the position she got in. You understand what I'm talking about? Because black, that's the other reason. Politically, black people love to do identity politics. Gotta vote for them because they black. What about vote for them because... It, okay, even if you want to deal with, we're going to vote for people because they black. Make sure that they are going to enact the policies that they are running on. If they're running a campaign, their campaigns have platforms that they run on. 
Well, I promise to do this. I promise to do that. I promise to address this thing. I promise to address that thing. That go from local government to state government all the way to federal government. People who are running for some type of office typically have a platform upon which they run. Letting the constituents know what are the main things that they are going to do once they get into office. Black people do not do not do any vetting or due diligence about the, the, the campaign, the platform, the promises, the politics of that person, the policies that that person believe in or has backed or has gone against. We just want to put them in there because they black. And I want to know what good has that done? The collective of black people. What good has that done? Because the government. The politicians that affect us most directly are our local government politicians, the mayors of our cities, the aldermen, things of that nature. These people are in charge of the direct laws and policies that really affect us in our day-to-day -day lives. Why we don't pay no attention to that? For those who vote, why you don't pay no attention to that? This is why I don't deal with politics. First of all, I'm not a registered voter quite on purpose. Quite on purpose. But for those who are regular voters, those who call themselves paying attention to politics and people's policies and things of that nature, why don't you pay, really pay attention to that and vote according to that? And if we're so staunch on this politician or that politician, then we need to come together collectively as a group and financially back that politician so that they will feel obligated to actually pay attention to what we want and what we need because we back their, we funded their campaign. This is why you don't hear me complaining about, you know, of going too in depth about politics. It's really not my wheelhouse at all. And I, I dance to the beat of a different drum anyway. I march to the beat of a different drum anyway. I render unto Caesar what is Caesar's. And unto God was God. But the fact that Tiffany Henry is being promoted, that she's being supported, that she's being defended. Let's get to the actual interview. I'm gonna try to get to the to the interview. And I'm gonna start it right at the beginning because not 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 two minutes in this chick, it starts lying. Not not two minutes in.
there when you are the mayor of uh, a small town uh, in Chicago. Uh, Tiffany Inyard is the mayor of Dalton, Illinois. Uh, and uh, there have been uh, all sorts of stories written, folks talking about what she wears, talking about her conduct, allegations about spending, uh, you name it. There's been uh, lots of drama, if you will. Uh, she joins us right now. I'm glad to have you here in studio. And so first off, um, so there are a couple of things. You're the mayor of Dalton, and then also you have, there's a township. So explain to folks the difference between those two and what your jobs are. Sure. sure. Thank you for having me. I appreciate you allowing me a platform to speak my truth. Um, the mayor, I'm the mayor of Dalton. I got elected in 2021. Right there, before we keep going, I'm not going to come back to you yet. What she say, what, what, what she say stupid just now? What, what, what stupid, what ignorant, ridiculous statement did she just make? I told you it's not, it's not this lit. The video is at 54 seconds. So that 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 let that let you know everything you need to know about this this these pair of back feet right here. With that straight uh quick weave in. Who where they have that straight no more and that color? That is a 1999 and a 2000 color and straightening. We don't go get them tracks no more and flat iron them and then put some type of product on them because that's why they shining and stiff like that. We don't do that. Catch up. She in the 99 and the 2000 with that. How dare she? This how you know. This how you know. How dare she show up with these TLC don't go chasing waterfall colors? Look at them highlights. Who does that anymore? Becoming the first female uh, mayor of Dalton and the youngest. And then I got appointed to supervisor a year later. So a mayor, we are all about services. So cut trees down, sidewalks, things of that nature. Um, supervisor is strictly resources. So help pay your light bill, gas bill, water bill. I even help bury your loved ones. I pay mortgage, I pay rent. It's a resource center. So okay, that's the so difference. So you have, so Dalton is a town about 20,000. The minute mark is at one minute and 20 seconds. Did you, did you catch what else she just said? I pay rent. I pay. I pay. She acting like this money is coming out of her pocket and she doing somebody a favor. Ma'am, that is taxpayer money. That's taxpayer money. You ain't pay nobody nothing, beloved. And that and, that, and, and, and this, this has straight out of the uh, uh bag too. It ain't no type of cut went to it or nothing. It ain't no layering or nothing. She got this straight out of the pack. These are wealths. Straight out of the beauty supply store packet. Do you understand that? Not even bundles. It's not even bundles. It's that. It's that whole weft. Had the audacity to try to put it to the side. Girl, if you don't knock it off, you can see how it's all stringy on her shoulder like that. She ain't brushed it. Anyway. 
How, how large is the township? Township covers what? I cover 190,000 residents. Okay. I'm over 17 towns. Okay. Right. So, yes. and our, uh, and for the township, mm -hmm. are those elected positions or appointed positions? Yes, it's elected. Um, my predecessor passed away and I was appointed to his seat, therefore taking the rest of his term. Okay. Uh, and for for the different jobs, so Dalton pays you what as mayor, township pays you what? Sure. So my mayor position is fifty thousand dollars, which was already there, and my township position is two twenty four, which was already there. When I got sworn into either seat, I, it came with the salary, which everybody prior to me received. Now, are both of those deemed full time jobs? Well, no, part time. Okay. Yes. All right. So so let's 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 first deal with Dalton. So sure. uh, your critics say uh, that uh, you have a significant security detail. First of all, how large is your police department uh, in Dalton uh, and what is your security detail? So we have about 45 officers in mm -hmm. our village. Um, my security is warranted due to the fact of threats and things of that nature. But what people are not stating is it's in our CBA. That's our collective bargaining agreement. That's our union contract. So it come with the seat. That's what people are not saying. I didn't make this up. I didn't just create this and say, I want security. How it many officers is it? How many officers is what? On oh, oh, security detail. Uh, I'm not going to say how many. Now, we're going to, I'm going to come back to you for two seconds before we continue this on. He never asks her what, why, why is she under threat? If you're being threatened, why are people so angry with you as to threaten you? You're not some type of mob boss. Who do you think you are? Huh? Calling her te Tiffany Teflon is absolutely correct. Because she somehow, according to her, wins these little lawsuit cases. She thinks she's some type of uh, uh, crime lord or something. And she got to have detail, security detail, 24 hours a day because her life in danger. You ever wonder, you ever ask, well, who's threatening you and why are they threatening you? What's the basis of these threats? He never asks her that. Roly Poly never asks her that. Roland, why you ain't ask her that? I know, I know, I know somebody watches me. I mean, these people watch me. Roland, why you didn't ask her the, the natural next question? If you're, if you feel your safety to be compromised, why is that so? Because when Fanny said it, it was understandable. When Fanny Willis said, I have to have security detail and things of that nature. I actually understood that because of the types of cases that she prosecutes. And it's nothing to be doxxed. It's nothing for somebody to find out where you are and things of that nature. So her being in danger actually made sense to me, regardless of everything else. Her saying, you know what, because of the cases that I prosecute, because of the type of people, because of, you know what I'm saying, that they're in gangs and things of that nature, you know, they find out where I am and, you know, they come for me. I get threats because of that. That's a reason to get a threat that you, you see what I'm saying? That makes sense as a reason. So it's not mysterious. Well, where would the threat come from? It was obvious where the threats come from. But for you, why would there be, you are the mayor of a poor, for all intents and purposes, a poor South suburban township. Why are you getting threats? Could it be because you dog so many people, you got to watch your back? See, only a certain kind of people got to really watch their back. See, we, when you make enemies, you got to watch your back. When you run around and you make enemies, you typically got to watch your back. 
Now, sometimes you can make enemies for a righteous reason. I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. The ops don't like it. I have to be careful. Malcolm X righteously got enemies. He got enemies not because he was doing wrongdoing, but because he was doing the right thing and the powers that be did not want him to succeed. So therefore, he collected enemies, which ultimately ended his life. And then you can collect enemies because you do your backstabs people and you do people so dirty that you got to watch your back now because you messing with people's livelihood. What would make somebody, what would make somebody threaten you like that? Could it be that you trying to mess up my whole livelihood probably already done mess me up and set me back to such a degree that I might actually have to come see you. Hmm. That's what it is. Cause you, cause you stealing from me. Cause you taking food off my table. Cause you taking food out of my mouth. Cause you taking money out of my hand. Money that I'm scrimping and scrapping and fighting for each day. And because you want to run all these scams and this, that, and the third, and you know what I'm saying, act like you, Tony Montana over Dalton, I might have to come see you for that. So now you got to watch your back. Cause you, because you live in the place with the same people that you are backstabbing and doing dirty. Not very smart. Before I get back to it, I'm going to hit the commercial break. I'm going to come back and read the super chats. And then we're going to keep going with this cook. But after these messages, we'll be right back. Because if you are looking to keep your skin glowing, looking its best, smelling fabulous, feeling fabulous and silky smooth, then I know that you want to hit the link from ashkicking.com. The link is at the top of the chat. All right. You definitely want to get this body butter. Their body care products are superbly crafted. This is very quality stuff. This packaging, beautiful. The product inside, wonderful. Does exactly what they say that it's going to do. If for whatever reason, this is going to be your first time making a purchase with ashkicking.com, you definitely want to take advantage of a 10% discount off of your first order by using the promo code CRIMSON. Once again, do not hesitate to click the link at the top of the chat, ashkicking.com, pick you up all of the body care products that you see, and even the incense and things of that nature to just make your home a whole vibe. All right. I don't know how many likes we need, but I owe y'all a bam, 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 bam. You got to hit the like button, bam, bam. You got to, uh, 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 uh. Go ahead and hit the like button. Mods, please do me a big favor and put it on subscriber only as we get into the cook. Let me hit the super chats real quick too. Um, thank you, Clarence. I live in Dalton near Greenwood Ave. She has promised us a police station. I see a sign on a building, but no police cars there. No one inside. Exactly. Thank you, Almond. Said this is another shameful example of black women in charge. Roland is an embarrassment as well. He bought and paid for it. Absolutely. Thank you, Kim. Said Tariq is too silly. He definitely is. Thank you, Mogul. Said we vote against our interests and it ties into the culture. Exactly. Thank you, N.O. the boss. Said, well, sis, since we all know the game is perfectly rigged, 
The only way to defeat a rig game is to simply stop playing, a.k.a. don't vote no more, and let's just see what happens. Thank you, Brother Ali, for your super sticker. I appreciate you very much. And we are going to continue with the things that she's saying because this, this female here, she the type, she the type will make you come see her. She the type make you pull up. She the type make you pull right on up. Mm -hmm. Now, what was that you were saying in the town hall when you were sitting behind the desk and thought you were safe? what you say? I didn't hear, I didn't quite hear that. Say what now? Baby mama supreme, what you say? What kind of dirt did your back feet scoop? Scoop it again. I, I just want to see. I'm trying to see something. Okay. We're going to keep going because I, it, it's outrageous. We're not even three minutes. It, the the timestamp is at two minutes and forty six seconds. She already stupid. Any due to the threats of, on my life. So, but, it, but if it's but it, but if it's in your CBA, it is in my CBA. I'm not doing anything wrong. I even went to court due to the fact of people suing me, saying I cannot have a security detail, and I won. The judge said I can't have a security detail because it's already in a CBA. Okay, and so. Um, that that that's one of the issues there. Mm -hmm. um, you have other trustees who suggested that the city uh, is in a deficit. Mm -hmm. uh, what is the state of the city's finances? So we are in a deficit, but it's not what everybody's claiming it to be. They're going around um, with false allegations of five million, seven million, eight million. It's all false. Our deficit is two million dollars. Two million dollars. Two million dollars. And uh, what's your annual budget? Our annual budget is thirty million dollars. Three million dollars. Thirty. Thirty million dollars. Yep. And so how, how did you, what led to that deficit? So it comes from them not paying bills. So say for instance, we have a board meeting and they say, well, we're going to pull this out, pull that out. If they continue to pull bills out later on, what do you have? A deficit because the bills still do. Just like us not paying our mortgage or not paying our light bill. We still owe the money at the end of the month. When you say they, who's they? Uh, the trustees, the board. Because okay. the board is the one that votes to pay the bills. So uh, so you have two types of government out there. You got strong mayor, city council. Then yes. you have uh, city manager, former government. So uh, um, mayor and the trustees control the city's finances. Well, yes, when it comes to the budget, just the budget. Right. Yes. Right. So in terms of who's deciding to pay the bills, so this deficit that you have, you're saying that's a result of the trustees not paying the city's bills? Correct. But but do you have the resources? Yes. To pay, to pay the bills? Yes. So how's your deficit? Because they won't pay the bills. So it's still on our books. Until we release the check and pay the bill, we still count it as a deficit. So you're saying, so you have the money to pay the bills. Correct. You're saying your fellow trustees won't pay the bills. Correct. I'll, Why? Give, I'll give you prime example. Just to make me look bad. I'll give you prime example. Okay. I, I got to stop it here. I, I got, she said, just to make me look bad, girl, if you don't knock all of this off, if you don't knock every last one of these things off, that whole exchange for the last couple of minutes is how every hyena do everything. She dodged accountability like she was in the movie The Matrix, dodging bullets. It's all the trustees' fault. All everything. She said that the deficit, the debt for Dalton is two million dollars. When asked what the annual budget is, because you get an annual budget from uh, uh the state, right? The state gives all of its cities and municipalities and things of that nature an annual budget. You have an annual budget of $30 million for a small township, not a big one. 
And you trying to tell me that your deficit is two million. How? So you still mismanaging money, beloved. She said that like that alleviates her. She said it's not seven and it's not five. It's two. They won't pay the bills. You know what they won't pay? They won't pay the illegal charges that she run up. They not paying for that Las Vegas trip. They not paying for uh that magical Tahoe you driving. It's magical. Cause I because I still I went after the show Wednesday. I went back to the Chevy website to try to soup it up, so I still couldn't get it to one hundred fifty thousand dollars. I could not get that Tahoe. To 150000 I couldn't do it. Not from the MSRP. At precisely. On exactly what? So if your budget is 30 mil. And the deficit is 2. You spent 32 million. I want to know. I want to know what you spent on. I, now I need details. This is why she locked the trustees out of being able to see what's being spent. She locked them out of being able to approve prior to. She just going and spend it. And then now it's there. And then so now it's just there. So she. Don't she not asking permission? She won't forgiveness after you understand what I'm saying. Let me run the tab up, and y'all just pay it because it's here now. I mean, it's done now. What's done is done now. And the trustees, whenever they do get access, are like, No, because since when do the taxpayer money go to that? Like, justify that. Justify that with taxpayer money. And she can't do it. And because she can't do it, that's where the we're not paying bills from. That's where that come from. Because they won't pick up the tab of her mishandling the money overspending the money and spending it on her personal travels and personal things, personal trips and all of that. A complete mismanagement of funds. Taxpayer dollars is not meant to, you know, make you have an Instagram life. It's everybody else's fault. This is the other point that's wrong with it. Not only did she dodge accountability here's what else is wrong with it and why she is everything wrong with black female leadership if you're the leader and things go wrong it's still your fault don't they say that the condition of the community at large is all men's fault and they comfortable with saying that men have 100% of the fault of everything wrong in the community because the men are quote unquote leaders of the community. Do they not say that? Do not the hyenas say that constantly? They dodge, This is how they dodge accountability. They say we're not accountable for any of the uh, uh, things that's going wrong in the community. Everything that y'all say is wrong with black women and wrong with the community and single mothers and da 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 da. All of that is one hundred percent the men's fault because men are the quote unquote leaders of the community, which they are not. And that's that means that because you, they are the leaders, the buck stops with them. Even into in personal relationships, if she is being obstinate, not a good follower, 
not doing what her part in the relationship that's the man's fault because the man's supposed to be the leader in the relationship and if he doesn't force her to be in her feminine energy and listen and submit then that's his fault not her fault she can't be held accountable for her own actions as a competent adult is this or is this not the argument is this or is this not the argument so by that logic how is it that it's the trustee's fault but not her fault how how did it happen how sway by hyena logic all of what's going on in dawson is her fault because why she's the leader she ran for that seat not only was she appointed to it when her predecessor passed away she ran for the seat and won it in an election so you wanted to be there you volunteered to be there everything that happened is your fault right but no when it comes to the hyena they're able to shift the blame even when they're in the leadership seat and say that it's the followers that are bad followers not her as a bad leader so the trustees as the followers of her leadership are doing her dirty not she doing everybody else dirty as a bad leader I can't get over this yakky, but okay. My job is to govern. That's what a mayor does. I'm an executive branch. They're the legislative branch. Uh, when I go and I go get money and bring back to our community many grants, they refuse to pay things for residents. I created a roof and window program. They would not vote to pay the vendors to fix the roof and windows for our seniors and our veterans. Why? The money's there. It's in their bank account. You can see it. Why would they not pay the bill? So therefore, that program got on hold. These are things I created when I became the mayor of Dalton. But yet, people don't see your vision. It's people trying to take over government, and I won't allow it. They, they didn't do it prior to the um, other mayor having it. Why did nobody do any of the things they're doing to me? So when did when all of this began, this uh, not paying of the city's bills? So it's funny you asked that question. That's a great question. All this turmoil started right when I became mayor. Exactly. So that showed me right then and there that the plot was to remove me from office right in the beginning. I wasn't even in office for a, a good month before my board started to sit here and start to try to remove me from my seat that I earned and won by 82 percent. Remind you, 82 percent taken out. Of so I'm not going to come back to you just yet. She just told on herself. She said they wasn't doing this. The same board of trustees was not, quote unquote, trying to sabotage the previous mayor. The trouble started when she got there. I mean, do, do they not hear what they're saying? Do they not hear the things that's coming out of their mouth? They don't hear what they're talking about? Uh, no. She just admitted she's the problem. She just said it. Just to make you hurt look bad. Who are you? So you mean what you really telling me is that you wasn't in seat a good month before you started the shenanigans. That's what you're saying? Sound like that's what she's saying. Sound like she wasn't in there one good month before she started in with all the shenanigans all of the high power hyena shenanigans they saw immediately what you were doing and they didn't want to be part and parcel of it they were doing their job by holding you accountable
an incumbent that had the seat prior to me. So when uh, when your fellow trustees, let's say uh, Kiana Belcher, she's quoted as saying uh, mismanagement of funds. You're saying, no, it's not mismanagement. They're just not paying bills. That's correct. And so when you hear that from her, then what's the response? And if that's the case, have, have you released uh, publicly uh, the list of bills that, that, that they don't pay? Yes. And where is that? So that is normally on my website or it is on my uh, social media platform. And I verbally said at board meetings, you can see it when they go and they take out bills, they verbally tell you what they're taking out. Therefore, people can in, just in, add in it up council meeting. in the council meeting. So you can know and you can follow exactly what bills they're not paying. And it adds up. Eventually you get to a million dollars, then $2 million. And then also they have legal bills of $2 million of suing me um, for different reasons. Like what you're saying to you. Who's who sued you? Um, the, the, trustees? the trustees. The trustees. They take me to court for anything they say, right? Then we go to court and I won. I won over 24 cases. Yesterday I just got where I won another case. So I'm 25 to 0. So how is it possibly the mayor of Dalton? People got to. That's that. That's that Teflon. That's that Teflon Tiffany stuff. OK, that's why they call Gotti the Teflon Don, because everybody knew he was guilty of what he was being charged with and accused of. But when you are able to slither around and find little loopholes and this, that and the third, you know, you able to evade the consequences legally. But eventually that catches up. Eventually that catches up. He wasn't able to continue to dodge that bullet. And he dodged it quite a few times. But eventually they was able to create a case that was too airtight and they nailed him to it. But he got out of quite a few cases. It's like, okay, we know he's guilty, but see, it's not what you know, it's what you can prove. Beyond a shadow of a doubt. I want to, I'm going to skip ahead a little bit because we hear her blaming her followership for her bad leadership. Everything is everybody else's fault, which is typical of hyenas. I want to go to the big glaring red flag here. We're going to start right here. I don't appreciate it all. I just don't. Um, when you look at um, how you're being framed. Uh, you are being um, called crazy, deranged, uh, saying that you are uh, stealing funds. Um, you also, uh, you have a charity that um, uh, from the Attorney General's office is, uh, I understand they sent a cease and desist letter to your foundation? I don't know nothing about that. Um, I'm not crazy, I'm not You have a, a Tiffany Henry Cares, your foundation. I, so the Attorney General's office hasn't reached out to you regarding your, found your foundation? So I wanna set the record straight. I don't have a foundation. I am a supporter of anybody that's struggling with cancer. My mom had breast cancer and I'm always push anybody that has that. If someone uses my name to push their charity or if you say this is Tiffany t-shirt, people gonna buy Cause right now consider what? Clickbait. People make money off of my name by views. So you just so say my you name. don't have a, you say, you say you don't have a foundation. I don't, I do not. And that's okay. why I tell everybody go do your research. I'm not on anything. So, so, when we see all of this back and forth, when we see this is going back and forth, have you, um, and I've seen this happen before with school districts, um, I've seen this happen before with city councils, mm -hmm. uh, have you called in the state to come mediate? Did I call in the state? Have you called, have you, have you reached out to the state to come in and mediate what's going on here? So I've seen, I've seen school boards where you have lots of drama and T Texas Education Agency, you know, comes in and deals with that. You're having these issues there. Have you reached out to state lawmakers? Have you reached out to state representative senators to say, hey, how can we resolve these issues? Because if they're not paying bills, if legal fees are piling up, mm -hmm. that's just more taxpayer money being spent. Correct. And yes, we have. 
So maybe two people might have reached out to us in the beginning. We was doing kumbaya. We was having meetings. We was talking about what we have an uh, issue with one another. The sad thing is, it just reminds me of high school. It's just a he say, she say thing. But I don't like you because of this. or I don't understand this. It was more of that than basically taking care of the business of the town. We got elected to serve. That's it. We didn't get elected to make sure we like one another. And that's why I get upset with people that are in government. I want them to put their difference to the side and do what's right for the people. That's it. That's why I'm in this seat, because I care about my town. I want about 82 percent because people know and they saw me doing the work. So here's the thing. Let me let me come back to y'all real quick. I'm going to come back to you real quick. Because I need to point out that this whole cancer thing. How many people have charitable organizations that are named for them and they're still alive? That know nothing about it, don't approve it, and not on the board of it, not notified about it. And have nothing to do with it. How many how many charitable organizations do that? Even when they name things like the wing of a hospital or some building or some. Usually, especially if the person is still alive. Not posthumously. And they want and, 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 and a charitable or some organization has their name on it. Usually the person that is being named for has something to do with that particular charity because whether I like what the charity stands for or not, if it's, if I didn't approve my name to be attached to it, then I don't want my name on it. Because if y'all get up to some shenanigans with my name attached, no, ma'am. No, sir. Absolutely not. That's just my thinking. I don't want my name attached to nothing that I'm not attached to. Don't use my name. Don't use my brand. Don't use. If I didn't approve that or say it was okay. To use my name, my likeness, my brand, my whatever is attached to me. People know me. I'm a public figure. Things of that nature. Like, don't do that to me. That's just my thinking. Am I crazy? Am I crazy? Am I the only one that... Feel that way? You can't use my name, my image, my likeness, my nothing without my express permission in writing. A whole charity, when we got video of you talking about how you starting this charity and how you are all behind it and you want people to come out to the march because it's going to open up and then in the commencement of the charity and it's for the cancer and da 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 like, are you, are you kidding me, lady? This is why she got people want to pull up. It's the plan in your face for me. Ain't no way in the world as arrogant and narcissistic as this one is. That she would not have something in her name. She got, this is the same person with billboards all over Dalton with her face and name on it. She don't want her name on a charity. She doesn't want to create an organization that she can launder money through. Let's let's be real. Because charities and non-for-profits have tax implications. Do they not? Am I tripping? Maybe I'm tripping. But I thought when you have charitable organizations and things like not-for-profits you have to file a certain way taxes connected to that 
There's a stipend that comes with it, as far as I understand. And actually, the reason why some people get into the the, the not-for-profit and things of that nature is because you get a stipend and you also get a budget that you and the more you spend, the better that is. It's good to spend it because if you expend all of the money, that means you can actually get bigger budgets because you spent it. So there that that would indicate a need for this type of organization. Am I bugging? Not to mention, not for profit, that is not taxable. You have to report it you ha because it has to be transparent. But the, the stipend, the earning that you make is they don't tax that. This is why when you're a criminal, they use it for money laundering. Because you can hide money underneath money. We don't think this is the same person that's spending money to go to um, Las Vegas and spending money on glorified seafood boils and a Chevy Tahoe that I cannot soup up to $150,000, no matter what kind of package I put on there. This is her this is her definition of the high life. Glorified seafood boils. Going to the strip. Anybody that save up a little money that work hard can go to Las Vegas. That's a trip like any other trip. It's right here in the States. It's a domestic flight. I don't understand. Not smart enough to launder the money properly. Should have opened up a couple of mattress firm stores. I thoroughly believe those are money laundering spots, but that's another day. Not smart enough to launder the money through the organization because you sitting here won't even claim the organization publicly, but you already did it and it was on video. How you not, you know what? This chick a scammer. You know, we don't know a scammer when we see one. This is, this is the type of chick who do a credit card scam. Like this is a, she a scam. She a whole scammer. We don't know that. This is a this is a failed baby mama. Let's get down to it. She's a fail. She got a four year old. So four years ago, you got knocked up. That was a pandemic baby. So you got knocked up during the pandemic. You was unable to maintain that relationship. Cause she ain't got no man. She didn't say she she didn't she didn't say nothing about her husband. She said she had a kid. You tried to run a little burger joint that failed. You're unable to run a business because you're too busy being a scammer. You know nothing about finances. You know nothing about balancing a book. You don't know nothing about numbers. You 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 only know how to spend money. And ain't spending that right. I can't get over the $150,000 Chevy Tahoe. You could have got a Cadillac. <sighs> you know what? I'm not going to go to the car sites.
I mean, I just. This is the type of chick that runs scams about fixing your credit. This, this, is, this is who this is. Dalton, people of Dalton. She won one election for whatever reason. If she win another one, I ain't going to say nothing else about Tiffany Henry. And I bet not hear nobody complain. I'd rather the mayor, mayoral seat be vacant than to vote her back in. Y'all better not vote her back in there. I don't want to hear it if you vote her back in there. If you put her back the next election roll around, whenever that is. If 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 y'all vote her back in there, I don't want to hear no belly aching about how she what she doing. Just take just take what Nino Brown is doing. Worse than Martin showing up with a stuffed Rottweiler at the at the town hall meeting. I'm not going to keep going. She is everything wrong with black women in leadership. This is why our, her and that dog and pony show that Roland Martin put on, quote unquote, interviewing her. They are, this was a hyena and a gyena communicating. I want y'all to understand that that's what we witnessed. We witnessed a hyena and a gyena. The reason he didn't challenge her is because she is the matriarch. Hyena males know what side of the bread the butter is on. So they don't ever challenge a matriarch because they know she's going to eat them. She will rip their throats out. They know that. Male, male hyenas know that. So they don't challenge the matriarch because they don't have any hope of overpowering her. They are weak and emasculated. And so, therefore, they cannot challenge a, a matriarch of any ranking or order. So, this is the real reason why we didn't see the, a challenge and a holding of her accountable and having a real conversation with her about what's going on, questioning her, since these are false allegations, the truth. And if it's not making sense what she's saying, to actually do clarifying questions and things of that nature to get it out of her. I don't care if she get angry about it. But a hyena, a male hyena, know not to make the matriarch mad. They know not to do that. They know full and well that they cannot, they could never. A hyena could never. Only a lion would have had the heart to really get at her, and that's because... A matriarch hyena has no bearing on what a lion do with his pride. She can't make or break him. And in point of fact, she fear him. A lioness would have at least bitten her. See, hyenas like to try lionesses, but a lioness at minimum would have bitten her. A few times. That's, that is the dynamic that you just saw. And it is that dynamic that maintains the gynocracy in the black community. That dynamic that we just saw. A hyena blatantly running across the plains, blatantly, blatantly running all across the plains, hooping and hollering, <laughs> acting a fool. Not one challenge. All she do is that. And a gyena does not check her. She is not checked from this behavior. And because she is not checked from this behavior, this is why I keep going.
He didn't even so much as ask her questions. He can't remove her from the office. He can't do, but he didn't even so much as ask her pertinent questions that a hard-nosed journalist would ask. Not even that. He didn't even ask her the type of questions that a Barbara Walters would have asked her or something. Let me get to these super chats. Thank you, Common Man 80 said Joanne, Deborah, Byron, BKA, Asada, Olu, Olubala Shakur is the only black woman in the history of this nation that has to literally watch her back for doing the right thing. And she's in Cuba. Google her. Thank you so much, LA Miles says she needs her whole ash kicked. Lying like that. I see what you did there. Thank you, HVAC said. Just got in late. Zaddy needs to come get his minions. Tiffany DeVito <laughs> buck danced around that interview. Roly Poly didn't apply pressure. Thank you so much, Terenzo said. They blame men for the wrongdoings in the community. Yet it said the community will rise no higher than its women. A catch 22. Meanwhile, there are more females in power than women. It's over. Thank you again, Common Man. Say it's called a 501c3 nonprofit organization. Exactly. Thank you so much, Jay Bubba. Says she got knocked up by a married man. Mind you, I didn't know that part. Thank you, Miss Beth Shua. Says she more than likely went to Roly Poly because she knew that he would go easy on her. Roly Poly is a true Guyana. He definitely is not a vibranium top. <laughs> She got that Tahoe. Yeah, she that's the only way it's $150,000. She got that Tahoe that Nick Fury had in the Avengers. And I don't know that that was a Tahoe, but you get what I'm saying. It had all kind of, it was from S.H.I.E.L.D. It was from S.H.I.E.L.D. It was bulletproof. It had that gun in it. And she was able to escape. You understand what I'm saying? You wasn't going to catch Nick Fury up, baby. Yeah, she had that. She had that. That was that was a Nick. That was Nick Fury. That's the part that they're not talking about. That was Nick Fury struck there. Yeah. Anyway, I'm going to get on out of here. All right. I'm going to get out of here. Go ahead. Jump down in the comment section. Let me know what you think. Like, share, subscribe to the channel. If you have not, once again, I'm your hostess, The Crimson Cure, and this was my perspective. Bye-bye, Crimsonite.